Hey guys, it's Savannah and welcome back to my channel. As you can tell from the title of this video, today I want to talk a little bit about pet foods. I have some notes in front of me, so if I'm looking down, that is why. I also want to try to keep this video unedited. There might be a few jump cuts if I make mistakes, but I just kind of want to chill out and tell you guys about a series idea that I have and find out if you guys are interested in learning more about this. Now, pet nutrition is something that I'm really passionate about and have taken a couple online courses for. If there was formal education, I would definitely take it, but there just isn't. So this is going to be kind of an intro video to a possible series. So if you like the things that I talk about in this video or that I want the series to be about, please either leave a comment down below or press the thumbs up button to let me know that this is something that you're interested in. So looking at my notes here. So today's just gonna be basic my opinions on raw cooked and kibble slash wet for pets. Now I am going to be very transparent in this video. Um, my belief is that raw food is the best food that you should be feeding your cat or dog. And I just wanna say right now I am not feeding my dogs raw. I want to be completely honest about that. And although I would love to be feeding my pets raw, um, right now it's just financial reasons. So we are feeding a high quality kibble and also adding in fresh ingredients to up the nutritional value. So that is something that I want to talk about in future videos is if you're not able to feed raw, or you don't believe in feeding raw, whatever your reasons may be, I wanna have some videos about how you can choose a good quality kibble for your pet or wet food, and the uh, fresh foods you can add to their diet in with the kibble to make it a little bit better quality and more nutrients. So I just wanted to get that out of the way. Um, I also wanted to say that because there's lots of judgment in the dog community surrounding whether you're feeding raw, cooked, uh, kibble, or wet. And my opinion is, is just to do what is right for your family, for your pets. And honestly, if you can only afford to feed just kibble, not even add in the fresh ingredients, feeding a higher quality kibble, even though it's not the best for them, is way better than feeding a grocery store low quality kibble, um, like Beneful or Old Roy, uh, those sorts of things. Also, if you do happen to feed your dog or cat any of the brands that I named today, I'm gonna name a couple. Um, again, no judgment whatsoever. This is to educate and uh, lots of people don't know about this. Vets aren't very good at, um, vets are not very good about telling you about nutrition. They're actually not properly trained in nutrition and I'm gonna get into all of that in a second, but no judgment no matter what you feed your pet and if you do need help when I'm putting out these videos if I do continue to do this pet nutrition series. If you need help on where to go to look for good dog or cat food, how to get started on raw food, I'm here to help. You can always find me in the description box, go to my website and send me a message. I'd be happy to help. But today's just going to be an intro video to kind of some of the stuff I'm thinking about doing uh, for the series and just a little bit of info on my opinions and the uh, information that I have. So uh, I just want to say that um, most of this is going to be geared around um, kibble and pet food companies and why it is best to feed fresh food or raw food. Now, the pet food industry actually started in the 19th century, and um, it's a huge industry, and one of the reasons that it is is because it supports hum the human food industry as it gives a place to sell slaughterhouse waste unfit for human consumption. Um, so, what do I want to start with today for our little... Uh, intro video. I don't normally drink Starbucks, but I have a few gift cards left over from clients um, from Christmas time. So we went to the grocery store today and there's a Starbucks in there, so I decided to treat myself with a gift card. So 
I guess maybe I'll start with some of the video ideas uh, that I have for this series that you can maybe expect pretty soon. Um, one of the first ones I'd like to put out is shocking facts about your pet's food. This would probably be, be geared towards kibbles. Um, one of kind of the points I can highlight that'll be in that video that I'll speak more on is how your dog or cat in their foods they could actually be eating and consuming other pets. Dog or cats, uh, rabbits, birds, all of that stuff, uh, which is very surprising to some people. The pet food industry is hardly regulated at all and it actually has no regulations against um, having companion animals in companion animals' foods. So I'll talk about how that would happen and how you can look on your dog or cat's food to make sure that they are not um, eating other dog and cats, which is honestly pretty gross. So that is just kind of one of the examples that would be in that video. I would also like to talk about how to read food labels and pick the best kibble if you are going to kibble feed. Um, and also what words on the ingredients mean. Things like uh, meal, when they say like cornmeal, gluten meal, uh, chicken byproduct, those sorts of things. Lots of people don't know what that means, so they're not able to pick a high quality uh, kibble for their pet. So I want to kind of go through all of that in a video. Also a video on what you can add to kibble to improve the nutrient value. So fresh foods you can add on top of the kibble how you would do that and how they can benefit your pet and their health. And also I would love to go into a grocery store, I'm thinking possibly Walmart, go down their food aisle and see the options that they have. Lots of people shop at Walmart or just pick up their dog or cat food in a grocery store and usually there are not very good options there. So I would love to go down the pet food aisle in Walmart, uh, record all the brands that are there, flip them over, look at the ingredients, go through them with you guys, show you what's good, what's not. Maybe there's a good option at Walmart. I don't know, I don't buy my pet food there. Um, that might be a little bit tricky because I know sometimes people get kicked out of Walmart for filming, but I'm pretty sure we can figure it out if I, um, and if I am sneaky about it with my iPhone instead of just bringing in my camera, but I think that would be a really cool video to kind of record what's out there in Walmart or a grocery store and why people might be thinking that they're feeding a good quality uh, dry or wet food to their pet, but really they're not based on marketing um, and packaging, those sorts of things. And also, I do want to talk about the benefits of raw and home-cooked home meals for your pets. Just because I'm not doing that right now doesn't mean that I am not aware of why raw and home cooked are the best options for your pet. It's just not something that I am choosing to do at the moment. I actually do have an online certificate for a raw feeding course, so I do know how to properly transition a pet over to raw food and the things that need um, to be included in a raw food diet. Lots of people think if you switch your dog or cat to raw, you're only feeding raw meat, but this is not the case. Um, they need vegetables and some other things mixed in there too to have a balanced diet. So I do want to touch on raw food. Just because I personally don't feed raw food right now, I would like to educate those people that are ready to make the transition and really have optimal um, nutrients so their pet can have optimal health. Hey guys, sorry, I filled out my memory card and I had to switch stuff around. But what I was going to say is it's kind of hard for me to know exactly what to include in this video um, since it is just an intro video to what's going to be coming. So I don't want to give away too much um, or not include enough. So if you do want to start doing some research on your own, I totally encourage that. And there actually is, um, I know it's kind of hard to take food advice from somebody uh, that's not I guess professionally trained, I'm not a veterinarian. So there is a couple of uh, vets that are speaking out about the pet food industry and how you should be feeding more fresh foods. Um, and those two vets that I follow very closely and ha they have awesome information are Dr. Karen Beckner and Rodney Habib. I will link them both down below. They both have Facebook pages and Instagram pages. And I believe they both have YouTube channels as well. 
Also, there is a documentary on Netflix called Pet Fooled, and I believe, I know for sure, Dr. Karen Beckner is um, in that video, and possibly Rodney as well. But I watched that movie probably last summer when I was already um, well informed about the pet food industry and how to properly feed and all of that, and they touched on like lots of great topics, especially some good information about cats as well. So I'd highly recommend checking that out. And um, some of the stuff that I've learned is have has definitely been from them. They have awesome, awesome info. Um, the hard part about vets, I don't want to call them out, but they aren't really properly taught nutrition. The classes that they take are funded by some of these um, low quality pet food brands slash uh, pet food brands such as, and I'm just going to look at my notes here so I don't mess up anything that I'm about to say, such as uh, Royal Cannon Vet, Vet Brand Food um, or Hill Science Diet. Um, what most people don't know is that the um, pet food industry is dominated by some very big players. So for example, Royal Cannon, which you can either buy in like PetSmart, those sites, those types of stores, or they have their uh, vet brand food. They are actually owned by Mars. And yes, when I say Mars, I mean the chocolate bar company. So that big of a corporation isn't looking out for your pet's health. They're looking to make more money. Now the Hills Science Diet, they also have a uh, prescription brand of food. They are owned by Colgate Palm Olive. So yes, Colgate as in the toothpaste and palm olive as in the dish soap. And General Mills actually owns Blue Buffalo, which um, is considered a good quality food in stores such as PetSmart. Um, but to mention, they've had endless recalls. And when you actually go through their ingredient list, they are not a high quality food. They are a low quality kibble at a high quality price point. So there's just lots to know that nobody knows about and that is secretive in the pet food industry. So going back to what I was saying about vets before, unfortunately the classes that they take on nutrition are funded by uh, Royal Cannon, which is owned by Mars. So obviously they are going to gear their material towards uh, pets should be fed our Royal Cannon vet brand, but it's owned by Mars, a chocolate, a chocolate bar company, which drives me nuts. Um, also, I wrote down a few other um, brands here. So, Beneful, Purina, Vet Diets, Fancy Feast, Do and jo Dog Chow are owned by Nestle, which is another chocolate bar company. I actually have a little picture that shows all the major companies that own dog food brands and which they belong to. So I will link that somewhere down below so you can take a look at it. So you can see Nestle and then see all of the brands that they own. Um, the Colgate Palm Olive, the General Mills, which again, General Mills is a cereal company. That's what they're known for, but they own Blue Buffalo. Um, I hope everything I said there made sense. But I will link that down below so you can see for yourself. Um, I guess what I will kind of end on for today is the order of best foods to feed. So the order of the best quality food to feed your pet to the least quality goes something like this. It starts at raw, the next best is canned, and this has to do with the moisture content. There's a lot of moisture in canned food, and that's usually what pets are lacking in their food is moisture. They're not drinking enough water when they're on the kibble. They require more moisture and this leads to uh, liver and kidney problems. And also the canned food is usually less processed because it will have like whole pieces of things in it and a good quality canned food. Let's keep that in mind. Like the gravy train stuff, not good quality canned food. So this is all based upon it being high quality. So raw food, then canned food, then dehydrated raw food, which lots of people will feed or mix into their kibble to give extra nutrition, but you're wanting to add in more, you're wanting to add water to the dehydrated raw for the same reason that pets require more moisture in their diet than they're getting. Then after that, wood, 
B, and I guess last on the list would be dry slash kibble. And this is because it lacks moisture. Um, kibble is full of carbs, which is not easy for them to digest. It causes inflammation and disease, and not to mention all of the, um, all the products are rendered, so it takes away a lot of the nutrients. Um, and also one thing that I want to mention a little bit is that a dry kibble could be labeled as grain free, grain free but that doesn't mean that it's carb free. And the carbs are one of the things that is not good in kibble for pets. So I think I've gone through everything that's in my notes that I want to cover today for this intro video. So if you are interested in any of the videos that I mentioned, um, if you're interested in learning more about raw food, about how to pick a kibble, the best, best quality kibble that you can for your pet, if you are going to choose kibble, um, how you can add in fresh foods to increase the nutrients in your pet's kibble, then please let me know. Give this a like and I will start working on those videos. This is something that I'm super passionate about. I don't believe that there should be any secrecy in what our pets are eating and there's a lot. <laughs> um, I think if I make the video on shocking facts about your pet's food, you will be shocked. You honestly will. So I will link everything down below that I talked about uh, resources, the two vets that I mentioned and the Pet Fooled on Netflix. I also have a few books that I refer to a lot. Um, the Holistic Dog book is a book, as you can see, I have tons of tabs. The first section is about food, but then there's lots of other holistic things that are awesome in this book. And then also, this is the first book that I read about pet food. It's called Food Pets Die For, Shocking Facts About Pet Food. So this is an entire book about pet food and it's really good it goes really in depth and the guy knows what he's talking about it's amazing um and it's awesome because i have a little uh page marked here that i was maybe going to mention today but it goes through like every in one section of it it goes through every country and what their regulations are for pet food so i have it marked right here for regulations in canada because I'm from Canada and it shows you how little regulations there are in pet food. Um, let me see if I can find the one part that I did want to read out of this. Okay, so I paused the video for a little bit so I could find this quote because it took me a little bit. It is on the top of page 58 um, uh, in the book Food Pets Die For. So it says, Walker also advised me that it is illegal to use dead companion animals in the manufacture of pet foods in United Kingdom and the rest of Europe. Although this may be true, still in the United States and Canada, there are no regulations to prohibit this material from being used in commercial pet foods. Then it also goes on to say that um, there are no feeding trials or quality assurance that Canada and the US, like a bigger board that it has to go through. Everybody, every company does their own quality assurance programs and feeding trials. Um, and this is where a lot of problems come in in the pet food industry where they say their foods pass. And then a few years later, there's a recall because dogs are getting, dogs or cats are getting sick or dying. And there actually was recently a recall on a vet brand food. I believe it had too high of levels of either vitamin C or vitamin K. And my question to vets are, why isn't that being regulated? How was it that there was such high levels of a vitamin in your food that it was getting, it was making pets sick, but it's your vet, vet brand food. It's supposed to be the best quality food. Wouldn't it have the best regulations and you know exactly what's going into it? Um, I'm kind of getting on a tangent here, but if you do like the idea of this kind of content, please let me know as I'd love to make it for you and just keep all of my pet owners out there informed so you can make the best decision for your pet. So thanks so much for watching till the end of this video. I know it was kind of long and rambly, but if you're excited for this upcoming series, please once again, give this video a like and also subscribe to my channel. I'd love to have you stay so you can learn more about caring for your pet holistically. Thanks guys, have a great day.